We want to overcomplicate everything. It yeah. must be harder than that. Yeah. But it's not. God wants you to Yeah, the coach yes. comes, comes back to, please keep it simple. Please that's stop right. complicating it. That's right. It's like, God wants your yes, and then he wants your humility so that he can work through you, and then results happen. I love it. Right? And results happen. So we're going all over the country and doing these missions and just saying, look, there needs to be something for men. Yeah. Our church is broken in a big part because men have abdicated their responsibilities. Mm. Right? We're not living as the husbands and fathers we're supposed to be. We're not living as the leaders of the parish that we're supposed to be. This has fallen on a lot of our wives to do everything, to be moms yeah. and, and spouses, and now lead, take the role of the men in the church. Mm. And it's not supposed to be that way. God made, for, made the men to be the spiritual leaders of the family and of the church. Yeah. And so what I'm trying to do is go, look, I don't, I don't care what you've done. God doesn't care about what you've done. He cares about what you have the potential mm. to do. Mm. And like, so we come into these groups because we're not supposed to do this alone. Like, this is why God sent out the apostles two by two. This is why Jesus sent them out together because he knew one of them might fall and there'd be another one to pick them up. Mm. I love this. And this is what we need in our I life. It. I love it. And when we come together, it's like, you know what? This version, if I live for Jesus, then I'm going to lose everything and I'm not going to know who I am anymore. There's no one who knows more about who yeah. you're supposed to be than the one who created you. Yeah. Right? And so when you open that up, you talk so much about joy, that's, that's a place where joy comes from. Because yeah. I've now figured out what, hopefully what my gifts are, how I can serve the Lord and others, and just the abundance of joy just rolls from that. Well, well, and what you're tapping into here is, isn't just a key for joy, but for renewal in the church. Yeah. And you know this because you were raised a Baptist, mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and I know this because I obsess on this stuff, like what's, what's the key to renewal in the church? Uh, you look at the non-denominational churches that are kicking our butts, and yeah. It's all small groups. It's it all authentic human connections. Where the, yes, they're studying things. Yes, they're doing service. But all along, they're they're getting to know and they're they're being known by the people yeah. in the groups. And to answer that need, in the, in the like the, the, we can't compete with a lot of stuff the world is going to do. Sure, we can't we can't compete with with uh, you know with Broadway when we're at mass. Like, yeah, you know, this right. is a different thing. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but this world cannot compete with that that place where it's like come here and be real. Yeah. And that's not something that our pastor can do for us. We have to do it we person to person. we got to pick up that charge, man. My bishop always says, Bishop Talley in Memphis, he's amazing. He always says 1% of the church is on this side of the altar, right? The rest is over not there. Even. Where do you think the change right. is going to happen, right. right? And that's that's the thing, Chris. It's just it's, uh, it's up to us to do something about it. We're called to live in those gifts and to figure out what our purpose is. And, and it's about relationship, not institutionalism. Mm. And oftentimes, as Catholics, our faith can become very institutional. Mm. In fact, you know, I, I don't know the quote off the top of my head, word for word, but Pope Benedict XVI said that this is the reason that most people don't find joy in the faith, mm. as we see it as something institutional, as, in, mm. as instead of an encounter with a, a relationship with Christ. 